And we are live. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Hacksmutter Twitch channel or my YouTube page if you're watching this after the fact. I have a special treat for you. I have a special treat for me. I am here with the Zach Hill. Zach, man, welcome to the Hacksmutter Twitch channel. How are you doing? Good, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It's, it's, sure. it's happy a, to be here. It is an honor. You have a much cooler background than me. I work like my <laughs> office is in an unfinished basement, and so I just keep it dark behind me. <laughs> Or else it doesn't look good. I need to get a cool setup like you have. To just get like a green screen, throw a green screen behind you, and you can you make it look however you want. I so easy, I have easy. a legit. I have a fake brick wall that um, I can put behind me. It's just I don't like carrying it over here. I mean, it's not a real brick wall, so it's not that heavy. But I could I could I always it. do that. Uh, a few things before we get started. For those of you watching the interview live, first of all, you're cooler than the people watching it on YouTube after the fact. I still like you guys on YouTube, but love it when you join live just to participate in the conversation. And there's two ways you can participate in this conversation. One is if you have a Twitch account, feel free to post any comments on Twitch. I am monitoring the Twitch chat, and I will do my best to prioritize your questions. The other way you can participate is I know many of you are part of the Work Smarter Discord, and I created a special channel on there called, well, actually, Jack created it 
it for me because I'm a Discord noob, but it's called Zach Hill Chat, and it's underneath the Hack Smarter Parent channel. So I will be watching both of those if you have questions or comments about the stream. And Nate posted good, just making sure all of that stuff is working well. So those are two ways you can participate. I will do a quick commercial uh, for the Work Smarter Discord community. This is a community we started a little over a year ago, started with just two of us holding each other accountable to our career goals. And we now have around 1,800 members. And one thing that I think sets us apart is every Monday night, we host a weekly goals meeting. We uh, have anywhere from sometimes 10 to 20 to sometimes 30 people. And we ask two questions. What did you accomplish this past week? And what are your specific learning goals for this week? We also do resume review, mock interviews, career guidance. Nothing's behind a paywall. Everything's free of charge. This is a way of giving back to the community. So if if you're watching this and you want to join that community, there'll be a link on the YouTube channel in the description. Otherwise, if anyone on Twitch minds dropping that link on the Twitch chat, I know a lot of you have it. Just drop an invite and you guys can join on Twitch. Okay, done with my commercials, done with all my fun intro stuff. Uh, Zach is really the leader of a few different things. He started a YouTube channel. It was called IT Career Questions, recently rebranded to Run CMD, which is awesome. We'll talk about that. He has over 250,000 subscribers on there. He's also one of the leaders over at TCM Security, which I'm sure all of you have heard about them. But let's just dive into it, Zach. So if we had never met, you only had a few minutes to introduce yourself. Who is Zach Hill? Uh, who is Zach? That's a great question. And it's just like so difficult to answer, uh, very quick. I generally just tell people I'm a nerd and I'm very passionate about helping people. Like that's, that's who Zach Hill is. I'm just a, a nerdy guy who, who likes to help people. You know, I have a family, um, and, and that's, you know, I, I, I guess I'm very family oriented and very like, uh, community oriented and I, I, everything I do, I think comes from a good place honestly and, and that's that's what i try that's what i always try to get people to see or understand um anything about me uh, above anything else you know because i think sometimes i could rub people the wrong way but um ultimately like i i come from a good place i love it and that's evident through all the things that you've you've given back to the community and i think one of the biggest things you're known for is youtube and all the incredible content you create on there you originally started a, a youtube page called it career questions as i shared before you rebranded it to run cmd and we'll talk about that but i first i just want to hear about your journey um how long ago did you start your youtube channel and what what are the catalysts for that were there key moments key people key ideas that led to the creation and your journey into content creation yeah, so it, it's funny. It's a, it's a man. It's, it's eight years ago now at this point, uh, back in 2014. And I just started working for a hospital uh, about four or five months prior to the to starting the channel. And the guy that uh, one of the, the sys admins that I was working with there at the hospital, he had a YouTube channel uh, and it's still up and it's called PC Addicts. Um, awesome. and he's got Shout like, I don't know, PC like Addicts. he's got like 50,000 subscribers or whatever it is now. He doesn't do anything on the channel anymore. Um, but back then he was like, dude, you, you have a, you have a great personality. Like you, you really are, you know, very genuine. You care about helping people. You should give this a shot. And he like would hound me on this for like, it was like months, like right after I first started, like, he was just like, dude, you need to do this. Um, so it literally just took months of him hounding me to, to, to give it a shot. And then I finally did. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna try it. Just, just give it a shot see what happens. Cause um, you know, I, I just wanted to help people. And that was the thing too, is like, what am I going to do? You know, his name is Chris, but so I'm like, Chris, what am I even going to talk about? What, you know, I don't know anything, you know, about this, you know, what do I do? He's just like, just help people. It's like, think about something where you, you would give back and help people. And then originally it started where I was like, I'm just going to like put out like really stupid, simple videos that, that can help people. And if you look back on the channel, if you like go all the way back, like, it's like how to increase your font size and how to take a screenshot. Like those are like the first, like, I don't know, six videos or whatever I did. There's just random stuff. And then this one day I was driving in the car and did this video, like things that you should know before getting into IT. Mm. Just because like at that time in 2014 or 2015, whatever it was then, um, when you looked out on YouTube, like there was nobody there providing any type of insight or guidance for just like IT. There were so many people out there um, talking about programming development, like that, that was like the main, like category of, of content creators on YouTube back then. Um, like, I, I think some of the most popular YouTubers in the IT space back then would have been like, um, uh, Eli, the computer guy, or like Barnacles or whatever, 
barely, but more so like Eli, the computer guy. Um, but anyway, there's like nobody doing that stuff. So I was like, I'm just going to try this. And uh, anyway, I made this video about, you know, things that you should know before getting into IT. And it just like took off, like for what the channel was at the time, you know? And I was like, wow, there's really like something here for this. And like, I've worked in IT at that point, like 14, 15 years. I was like, I have a lot of things that I can share. Uh, so that's, you know, like really like where I just started to go with, like, I, I enjoy helping people. I have a lot of value I think that I can bring and let me just share my experience and see what that can do for people. And then, uh, it, it turned into something that I never thought it would, I guess. And I've never really, I guess, kind of told that the story in that detail from the beginning like that, um, ever. So I, I'm glad that I actually got to like explain that a little bit further, um, but it just like, it really just spiraled into something that like, honestly, like I never anticipated, I never planned for, I never wanted, like, it was never something like that. I set out, like, I'm going to go get a hundred thousand subscribers and I'm going to make money from this. Like, that's not what I intended to do. I just wanted to help people like pure and simple, like very genuine. I just wanted to help people. Uh, so the fact that like it turned into everything that it did still to this day blows my mind uh, it's extremely overwhelming for me quite honestly um the amount of people you know who reach out and and and, and you know say like you you've helped me you've changed my life like i'm extremely uh you know honored and, and take a lot of you know pride in that and, and i'm thankful for that that i was able to help people um but overall like you, you know like the experience is extremely overwhelming um, because I'm a nerd, right? And like like most nerds, like I'm a total introvert. Uh, I was able to figure out like how to sit here and talk to a camera because like it's not real, right? But like you put me in person, I'm a completely different person, um, you know. So and, and yeah, like just the, the whole thing is it's very overwhelming, man. Like quite honestly, uh, because at the end of the day, like I just wanted to help people. So sure. like just let me help people, and that's it, you know. <laughs> fascinating I what stands out to me is genuine you mentioned that a few times but even just watching your videos they're genuine you're not you're not your i don't know if stereotypical is the right word but i know even like heath and a few other people have spoken out against people using it and cybersecurity content to make money people have never worked in the field and people sharing advice that is that is misleading you clearly don't fall into that group you're doing this from a genuine place you're doing it from a real experience i'm curious about the growth trajectory from when you started eight years ago. So I, I started a channel um, 10 months ago and like I'm I'm like a small little goldfish. I have like, I don't know, 2,500 subscribers. So I'm like a, a nobody in, in the world of YouTube. What was that growth trajectory well, like for you? What Did it start out slow? Was there a time where it just kind of blew up for you? Like what did that look like to reach 250,000 yeah, subscribers, which um, is incredible. <laughs> Yeah, I I want to answer that and I want to come back to that. But like you had said, you know, like if you if you watch all my stuff, I'm very genuine and whatnot, which I appreciate. But if you also go back and look at some of the stuff, like there's a there was a time where it wasn't. Oh, sure. and I think it's and, and I think it it's very apparent. And, and I can I can go back and look at it and see because you know, I I, I lived that, I experienced that. And that happened after I went full time on YouTube, because at that point, like going full time on YouTube, like now you now I have to um, like I have to force myself to drive revenue through this platform that like that's not what it wasn't what it was intended to be, I guess, you know. Sure. Uh, so I struggled a lot with that. I really struggled a lot with that, like taking on sponsors and, and doing like affiliate work and things like that. Um, well, I, I did it, you know, and sometimes I still do it like, there is, but it's very few and far between, especially nowadays. Like there's only like one company that I, well, two companies, you know, like TCM and like it pro TV, like I'll, I will recommend those all the time. And if they ever said, Hey, we will pay you money to talk about us. I would talk about them because I, I love them. Um, and not because they're going to pay me. Um, but like, that was a huge thing for me. Uh, and, and that's like, a that's just a huge problem. I think in general with wanting to become like a quote unquote influencer, wanting to get out here on these platforms and stuff like that. There comes a time where like the more that you grow, the more opportunities are going to come your way and the more money is going to come your way. And it can be very appealing. Um, 
And like we said before, we even hopped on this, I was talking about a desk, right? Like I got two free, the amount of free crap that you get, right? From just doing this stuff is ridiculous. Um, and again, like, that's not why I do it, but like, that makes me feel guilty. And like the fact that like now um, I work full time for TCM security and like my YouTube channel is out there and it's still continuing to help people because, you know, a lot of the content is very just like evergreen. So it just, it sticks around for a while because whatever, whatever I said in those videos, it's just, it's, it'll stand the test of time basically. Cause it's just sure. advice that can go on forever. Um, and it continues to make money. And it's something that I, I struggle with and people, and it's just like, this is like first world problems crap. Right. But it makes me have like incredible guilt because like, mm -hmm. I'm not able to spend the time to help these people the way that I had wanted to, the way that I intended to, because now my journey is different, you know, but yet like this channel is still here, like making money and doing all these things. And, and I, again, I just have an incredible amount of guilt. Um, with that. And I think it's a lot of, it's, it's, I think it's hard for a lot of people to understand um, until you start like going through this, the, like the process of becoming like a influencer, a creator and wanting to do this stuff like full time. Um, when you asked about the growth thing in yeah. 2018, I learned at that point in time, and that was just from doing YouTube for four years at that point, that there was specific types of content that I could do that would produce really good results. And it's just like I quote unquote unlocked a formula, but at the same time, like I unlocked this formula and I could have took advantage of it and I took advantage of it a little bit, but I could have really accelerated that and geared my channel towards cybersecurity. Cause that was one of the big things back then in 2018. If I would have just said, I'm going to focus on cybersecurity, I would have been uh, another popular YouTuber that you see out there right now. But that's not the route that I wanted to take because it was it was not a genuine route that I could see myself going down. Mm -hmm. I'd never worked in cybersecurity ever in my life. You know, like I'm not going to gear my entire channel towards something that I can't genuinely speak about and, and, and feel comfortable talking about. Now, while other people can and they obviously have, that's not the route that I could take, wanted to take. And I'm glad that I never took it. So I'm, I'm happy. I, I'm happier now than I ever have been, quite honestly. Um, the work that I do with like TCM, um, it you know, we're changing more lives and impacting more people. And that, you know, that that means the world to me. Um, and like that that type of impact of uh, helping people and, and changing their lives, like that's a, a value that, you know, nobody could ever take away from me. As long as I, I have that capability, like I will continue to do that. So I'm sorry to go down that whole like tire, like whatever, no, but like no. just for people to like understand, me. like it, the whole influencer game is not what it all cracks up to be by any means. If you want to go out there and make money and be, you know, completely not genuine, disingenuous, whatever, you know, like that's fine. But like, man, I, I couldn't live like that. I could not live with myself like that. Um, and that's where like in 2020, like I had literally come to a point where like, I was, I was done with everything. Um, I won't get into that cause it's just like super depressing, but yeah. Um, not all it cracks up to be by any means. So I, you said you don't want to go into that. <laughs> I don't know if that's for, for my sake or for your sake, but there was a question I had as we were talking is as you've wrestled with, with somewhat of an identity crisis when it comes to content creation and your role in, in helping people. I wanted to ask, was there a time where you truly wanted to quit or came close to quitting? Maybe that's what 2020 is alluding oh, yeah. to. Are you comfortable talking about that a little bit? Uh, it was really like in 2019, like it was a, like it was a year and a half after I had went full time YouTube where I was just like, I don't I can't do this full time. Like I, as much as like I'm an introvert and like I really don't like being around people, being around people is amazing. Um, so working from home has been the biggest struggle struggle for me. And again, I've been doing that since 2018. So um, by the time 2020 rolled around, like even before the whole thing had the world events happened, like I was at a point where like, I was trying to get back into the workforce because like, I was so just distraught, depressed, um, just yeah, lost really. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then, then everything happened and, uh, it got 10 times worse. So by 
by the summer of, of 2020, like I, quite honestly, I, I have shared this before. Like I, I was like suicidal basically. Like I had plans to like sell my YouTube channel, make sure like my family was taken care of because I was so, um, just completely distraught with, with just everything, you know? And, and, uh, a lot of that pressure and anxiety was, uh, around YouTube, like, honestly. That is, that's deep. That's, that's really interesting. And when I was looking at your website and my memory may be faulty here, but I was reading kind of your story and I think you have kind of a mini biography on there. And I think you talked about even wrestling with depression, um, as a teenager, I think you maybe said you, you dropped out of school or something along those lines and, and really wrestled with depression. Do you mind sharing just a little bit of your journey with, with mental health and any words of advice you would offer to other people who maybe they stumbled across this video, maybe they're an IT, maybe they're not. But as you talk about depression and anxiety, they resonate deeply with that, but, but not in a good way. What, what advice, what, what wisdom would you offer? Never give up. There's always a light at the end of the tunnel. It's so hard to see sometimes. Um, and, and literally like 20, man, uh, when I was 14, I dropped out of high school because like, I had just, I, I, I was depressed. I didn't know what, what happened at that time. This was 1998, you know, so to keep in mind, it was a long, long time ago. Nobody knew what was wrong with me. I didn't know what was wrong with me. I just woke up one day and I didn't want to do anything. Hmm. Um, and that was 14 and it, it got worse from there, I guess, you know? Um, but I think the thing that always kept me going is just like, no matter what I, I felt that there was more and I just couldn't, I couldn't give up. I couldn't stop. There's always a light like that. I just had, I had to keep reminding myself of that. Um, and it sound it can sound silly and it can sound really silly, especially in the moment when you're in that like moment of despair, but you have to cling on to that because if like, once you, once you, you know, let go, like obvious, you're right. But like, you have to cling on to that light. Um, things do get better and things do change. And like, I, I guess I'm proof of that in some ways, but like, I still struggle with depression and anxiety every single day. So, you know, it, it's something that I don't think anybody ever gets over and says like, Oh, I'm cured and I'm never depressed. No, you just feel, or you figure out ways to, to deal with it. And, and that just, just like everything else in life, it's, it's, you learn through experience, right? Like, sure. just like as you're learning IT and, and things related to IT, like the more that you go through it, like the more you experience, the more you understand different ways to deal with it and different ways around it and things like that. But just never give up, I guess, you know? That, and again, it's probably cliche. It's probably sounds a little bit silly, but that was really like the thing for me. It's just like, I knew that even in this, this despair, this darkest moment, like it can turn around. It will turn around, you know? I, I get, I don't know. That's, that was really it for me for like the last, I don't know, 20 something years now. It's sure. kept me going. <clears throat> That's so good. And I mean, you're helping people right now. I'm even just looking at both switch and discord. I don't think there's been too many questions, but a lot of chat of people, I mean, relating to exactly what you're saying and sharing their own experiences with that. If you guys did drop a question and I missed it, redrop it. I'm trying to keep an eye on chat, but, um, I'm also just fascinated by by the things Zach is sharing and being helped personally. So if you dropped a question, I missed it. Just like spam it in one of the two chats and I will will eventually see it. Um, but even keeping with this conversation, so Zach, you have YouTube that you still do, um, not on a full-time basis. You work for TCM Security, which seems to just be blowing up in growth on a regular basis. You have a family, you have kids. Uh, in many ways, that's a recipe for more disaster, more depression, more burnout. What disciplines do you have in place in your life right now to help safeguard against some of those things and, and to continue to stay healthy and, and battle against depression and anxiety? Oh, uh, that's a terrible question to ask me. And, you know, I, and I wanted you to ask me that. I'm glad you did. Cause it's just a terrible question to ask me. Um, to be completely honest with you, like I just went through a, a really bad, uh, like, anxiety depression bout because i took on way too much at work um i have this problem i'm like a, i'm a people pleaser you know obviously i love to help people and you know part of that is like you know over exerting myself often because of that sure 
Um, and not, I, I hate to say this in, in the way that, and I, I hate the way it, it comes out sometimes, I guess, cause it's not intended to be that way. And I, but I joke about this and say like, I'm a Zach of all trades. Um, yeah, you have that in your website a few times. Like I remember it, seeing that. Yeah. yeah. But it's like very true. Cause like my whole career started, uh, really like it, it, when I dropped out of high school at 14, um, like three months later, we got a computer and got like, you know, AOL. And then like, I discovered the internet and, I, by the time 2000 rolled around, like literally like a year of pretty much like a year later, year and a half ish, almost later, like I'd started building websites. Um, so by 2000, like I was de- building and developing websites. I was making money. I was 16 years old, like sitting here on the computer, building websites, learning about internet marketing, learning about search engine optimization. Like I got to watch all of this stuff happen and grow. And I got to grow along with it because again, I was like 16 when all the, like the stuff was happening. So like there when like myspace came around or like i was there when like gmail was first released you know like when it was i've had a g i remember you had like an invite right yes yes my original gmail account is way back from what whatever year that was i can't even remember 2005 anyway i've been involved with with that part of like the industry forever you know and um part of the thing again like i enjoy helping people the whole reason why i got into like the infrastructure side of it is because um so I didn't, am I like super out of focus on the Twitch? It just like unfocus and refocus something with your camera. You're good now though. Yeah, I that got it. Weird. Sorry. That was weird. Um, yeah, the, the whole reason why I got into the infrastructure side of IT is because like I was developing websites for businesses and stuff like that. And they would always ask me like, Hey, can you help with this like computer issue and stuff? And like back in like the two thousands, everybody's like, you know, about websites, like you obviously know about computers. Like that's just the way it is but I didn't, but I like to help people. So I would always try. Um, and that's where I discovered my love for actually like more so the infrastructure side. And then like 2008 is when I transitioned to, to more like infrastructure IT and things. But anyway, um, with all that said, like, uh, I, I have a lot of experience doing things, you know, uh, working in IT for over 20 years in all different types of industries with like educational systems, with different like online learning platforms and things like that. So like, there's a lot that I can offer to TCM to Heath, you know, to, uh, to help out. So when things would come up, like, I'd be like, yeah, I can help with that. I can, you know, I'd love to help with that or whatever. And then it got to this point where I was just like, Zach is doing all of these things. And Zach only has time to do like one or two of these things. Um, And I got completely like overwhelmed, burnt out. So like December was a terrible, terrible month for me. Um, and I'm just like now coming out of that in, in, uh, in January and I took a step down at at work, um, because of, because of like the, the amount of stress and everything that I had. So yes. Interesting. So, so I I, I, I talk too much. I'm sorry. No, you don't talk too much. Like I'm like, once again, you like helping people. I'm truly being helped by this. I, I have a very similar problem with saying, saying yes to too many things. Um, I think it's from a lot of people struggle with, especially those who, who, generally want to help people who who serve in in a role of leadership so based on that experience let me just ask you what are you doing differently now you know like what are you going to do differently in the next six months the next year have you reflected on that yeah so i mean heath and i talked that was like a big thing too you know it's like having that open conversation um that helped tremendously um but then just setting you know and we still have to have more conversation there's a lot of things happening but um I had to set some, some, um, like guidelines, I guess, for myself, basically, and, and, and understanding, like, this is what I'm capable of. This is what I'm not capable of. Uh, one of the biggest issues I think that I had, um, and I still kind of have this, it's really hard for me to disconnect from work, especially working from home. Yeah. So since I started working for, for, with, uh, for TCM, like, you know, there'd be a lot of days where it'd be like 14, 16 hour days or whatever, or, you know, like Sunday, Saturday, Sundays, you know, and lots of, lots of nights just coming back to the computer, doing stuff and just never disconnecting, um, from work. And I have four kids, so that took a toll. So anyway, like December, you know, like a lot of the the stuff unfolded and now I'm, I'm taking more time to like disconnect from work. Um, you know, like when the kids come home so that I can get spend more time with them um, and, you know, do things on the weekends, things like that. Really trying to like just peel back, um, <clears throat> I guess, some of what I was doing 
or the amount of not some like just the amount of, of work i guess that i was doing um and that's helped tremendously and then just trying to outline like these are the things that like absolutely need to get done uh type of thing um and then just like you know having that conversation being open and honest you know now going forward like we both have to recognize or especially me like is this too much for me to take on you know um that type of thing so and so i'd be curious any advice you'd offer the people who are in that situation right now um but just the thought of talking to their boss their supervisor uh terrifies them of of in some ways admitting yeah. weakness yeah. did you have oh, yeah. that fear when you approach heath oh, and, and what, yeah. what advice would you offer others who have that fear right now uh well it took it took me like i i, did, I don't really want to go into a ton of details i guess you know but it, it really took me just hitting a point of like self-realization that like if i didn't go and talk to him like something really terrible was going to happen no matter what like sure. any way you look at it you know um whether that's something ter terrible for me or whatever or like you know I, just whatever you know um it just was going to lead to it, it was never going to get better that's really it like that's what that, that's that's the thing right like honestly if you don't talk about it to whoever you know you can whoever like you're reporting to or whatever like it's never going to get better because they're never going to understand what you're going through and they're never going to understand what you're you're battling there um so it's just like you can sit and stew in it and be miserable day in day out or you can you know just kind of peel that band-aid off and get it over with because at that point at the point that you're having a discussion like i guess similar to like what i'm thinking or trying to imply like there's either going to be a good thing happening from it or a bad thing happening from it sure. but at the end of the day like no matter what like if you have a great manager a great boss like i do like they're going to see and value the fact that like i recognized and acknowledged my failures basically right like i said this is what i screwed up on this is what i did not do well and but like i also said like this is what i can do better or these you know things like that so um yeah, it's, you know, but again, and if you don't have a cool boss like that, then like, you know, obviously it's going to go bad, right? But like, if you're, if you keep letting it stew, like it's going to get bad no matter what. So like, mm. do you keep being miserable and, and then like, wait for that ball to drop? Or do you just like, take the bull by the horns type of thing? And sure. I, it's like, sometimes that's really hard and difficult for people to do. But like, man, sometimes you just got to say like, F it, right? And just it's like a yolo thing and like i i just could not handle the amount of like anxiety that i was had like every single day like there there was literally so i wish i had the sheet in front of me because like i started seeing a counselor even and like my counselor and i like outlined like all these things that like i was doing like with, with work and my life and just like man it's just so much um so so much um i forgot where i was going with that but i don't no, know that's good that is good. Talk, That's helpful for me. Talk to your boss or manager, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure it's helpful to others. And one of the things that you've said no to in the past, we actually talked about this offline, is like one on one coaching. That was something I saw on your website. I know it's something a lot of people do. It's something I, I consider doing. When I started my YouTube page, it was the same thing. Uh, my desire was to help people. And I would like meet with people one on one and, and help them with things, which is doable, you know, when you get a message every couple of weeks, but now I like, it's hard for me to even respond to message, let alone meet with people who are asking for help. So I thought, you know, what does coaching look like? But then I don't want to charge people to meet with me because I don't think I'm that important. Uh, but I noticed you had coaching on there. And when I told you I was going to talk to you about it, you said, actually, uh, I don't really do that. Like I decided not to do that. So let, let's talk about that. Why did you first decide to consider offering coaching? And then why did you decide, nope, not going to do it? Would love, love to hear your thoughts on all that. Uh, the only reason why I had offered it initially is because people kept asking me for it. Um, it's really, it's not something I ever wanted to do. Um, because like, I just don't, again, probably like you feel like I'm going to provide that much. Like I'm just a person, right? Like, it's like, I feel like I just like every video I start or stuff that I say, just take it at face value, right? Like this is one person's advice, like go out and ask, you know, a hundred other people that same question and you're going to get a hundred other different answers you know um 
so like yeah like just the the coaching stuff is just like everybody asked for it and i did it twice and one of the people like the very first person that i ever career coached was um dakota who runs like the the bearded it dad youtube channel. oh yeah yep yep he was the very first person that i had ever coached um so look at him now right <laughs> but uh which he's very successful i'm very proud of him um but like <clears throat> that was a great experience for me and then like the next person was not a good experience and i was like i don't want to have bad experiences and it wasn't a bad experience because like i did a bad job or whatever it's just like that person just wasn't committed or whatever you know sure um so it you know i had and there was other ones that were like scheduled out and stuff and then like there was like no shows and stuff like that so it's just like i have way too much going on um this is not worth my time unfortunately like sure. i would love to help people but that's like what i pulled in like a lot of the live streams then too is just like i would try to do live stream like amas like that's why i think a majority of my live streams are basically like ask me anything because then i can provide maybe some of that guidance and help that some of these people want um you know and a lot of it too like i can't tell you the amount of times uh, the amount of messages that i get on a weekly basis from people, you know, like Zach, I love you. You're amazing. I've watched every single one of your videos and I have this question and whatever question it is, like a hundred percent was answered in one of my videos that they just told me they watched. So, um, that happens all the time. That that's maybe the most frustrating thing that I always get. So like I tell people all the time, like if you're going to reach out to me, make it unique and make it really, really different. Don't tell me like, anything that you like like me love me that you've watched my videos like tell me that you like stalked me on like instagram and you know you saw that i have a cat and it, whatever its name is right then i'll be like oh all right i'll respond to you you like, like took That's the time awesome. to like stalk me cool you know but i, I mean that you know it's not you know it, communication these days is not what it was even you know five years ago um you know there, there's like I, I think now like the amount of people who are online is like just i'm not gonna go down that combo anyway sorry sure no you're you're good and on the on the youtube side of it i know one of the things you were trying to i don't know if drop is the right word or shift um well you did two things right you rebranded to run cmd so we'd like mm -hmm. to hear about that but you also posted on linkedin uh, a few months ago you were looking for essentially content creators that you were going to hire on a per video basis to help with some of the content creation stuff that's when i first talked to you because i reached out to you thinking man this this might be this might be a cool thing to talk about, but you are very blunt about the time commitment behind it. It's not just making a short video, all the editing, all the work that goes into it. And then I had that conversation actually with my wife and uh, some of my friends on Work Smarter. Like, man, it seems like a really good opportunity, but uh, I'm already committed to so many things. I don't I don't think I could I could do this justice. Um, so let's let's talk about those two things. Let's start with the first one, just to be be very clear. IT career questions now run CMD of the sweet poster in the background. Why the name change? Why the rebranding? Um, because I don't have the time for the channel anymore. And I felt the name again, uh, was a little bit distant. Yeah. I can't say that word. I'm not going to try to, I guess, uh, keep fumbling it. It's just very not genuine. Right. Um, for a long time, you know, I, I was the IT career questions guy, you know, you could come to the channel and I could help with a lot of your IT career questions that you had. Like if I didn't have the answer, like I was reaching out to all of the connections and that I had made over the years. Um, but I just don't have that time anymore. Um, so I guess I just didn't want that to continue. Um, especially if like I was going to be releasing videos sporadically like I am now. Um, yeah, and I couldn't find anybody to create content for the channel either. Thanks, by the way. Just kidding. <laughs> that was giving my second question. Like, is that still an offer? Like, are you still looking for people? Um, yeah, somebody came along for sure. That? Yeah, if somebody came along and said, "Hey, I would love to make videos for your channel," and they, you know, like you, I, I would have totally any day of the week said, "Yeah, absolutely, you can do videos on the channel." Um, I'm not trying to say any, like I'm not guilt tripping you, <laughs> tripping you or anything like that. <laughs> Um, but there, you know, there's been a few people who have come along who are like, yeah, absolutely. I would have you do it in a heartbeat. But then they, so then they realized like, oh, this is a little bit of work. Um, yeah. If that opportunity happened for sure. Um, but I just, I think I just kind of hired like a video editor the other day. Um, so whenever I get time, which will be like almost never, like I'm just going to record out of 
few videos and have them edit it and see what happens from there. But uh, right. yeah, it's not, it's just not the same, I guess that it, you know, it was before. And I don't, I don't want to be the IT career questions guy, you know, anymore. That's just not me. Sure. That makes a lot of sense. Well, I'm going to like twist your arm and make you put on your IT career question hat. Cause I, I, I want to ask you questions about IT careers and I want you to kind of speak to two groups of people. Um, one group would be someone in high school and let's say they want to pursue a career in IT would love to hear the advice you offer them. The second group would be someone who is making a mid-career transition. Uh, we won't say the age, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, however old they are, but they want to switch over to IT. I'm sure advice looks different. So from your experience, let's first speak to the person in high school. What, what advice would you offer them on getting into an IT career? Uh, this is actually a video I'm going to be doing soon. So it's kind of funny that you, you're asking this. I think it's great. So awesome. Um, yeah, so somebody who's in high school, right, uh, who's just graduating or even college. Well, no, you're, you're going high school, right? That's, yeah, that sure. The or just the traditional, you know, graduate yeah, at 18, tradition. maybe you go to college, or maybe you would say don't go to college. But, yeah, what that person. Oh, man, I – it's so hard to like generalize like these, like sure. oftentimes, you know, uh, because like there's, there, there's two types of people then, right. You know, at, at 18 years old, for instance, right. Who get out of high school. Uh, there's ones that are like interested in tech. I guess maybe there's like, now I'll just stick with you. There's ones that are interested in tech. And then there's ones that are like really passionate about tech, you know, um, there's a lot of 18 year old kids that come right out of high school and they often do with like certifications and like a lot of experience because high schools are doing a phenomenal job um, of teaching some, uh, some high schools, I guess, are doing a phenomenal job, not all. Um, but uh, some of these 18 year old kids can just like, they could literally graduate high school and go get a job working in IT, like a like help desk job, maybe like a junior type of job there are a lot of really talented kids nowadays. Um, and I just say that because like, if I look at myself at 16 years old, what I was doing, and if I look at what a 16 year old kid is doing nowadays, it just blows my mind. Like literally the amount of information and, and knowledge that they're getting nowadays is just like tenfold what I ever had then, right? So the kids now who have like a real deep passion for this and are like really, um, progressing themselves, they can really hit the ground running when they graduate high school. There, I have no doubt in my mind. Um, some people who maybe have an interest in tech, like they're going to have to go that more traditional route, go to college, you know, get like more certifications and things like that. Um, but once you do that, right, like once you go to college, hopefully you can figure out like the path that you want to take. And oftentimes, like, you know, college degrees are a huge requirement. Certifications are often like, a you know, a requirement. Like, you may not have to start off in like an entry level type of role graduating from college. Um, I say may not, but nowadays, like, I guess just to like break this down, like it doesn't matter. Like the degrees you have, the certifications you have, like the certification or the experience that you have to an extent, like social media, like LinkedIn, Discord, the stuff that you are doing, like when you started this whole stream, like those services that you guys are offering, for the community that's what matters like nowadays that's what's going to help people like start breaking down like the quote unquote door of getting into tech right like um these are the types of things that that like in 2023 and be, like going forward like people really need to be focusing on because that's really where they're going to get like the most knowledge for one um but the most um i guess uh exposure for two sure. um so just kind of, I'm just all over the place with this. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> like so much to say I'm about tracking. it, I guess. Yeah, it's so good. Well, um, on the flip um, side of it, are, are you still talking about the 18 year old? Well, yeah. So yeah, the, yeah. Um, well, this is like what I just said for the networking part of it does definitely apply to the 18 year old and to the 40 year old career changer. Yeah. Um, but going to the career changer, right? Like the career changers have such an advantage too to getting into IT. And, you know, I think a lot of them struggle with like, I don't know what to do. Um, I don't know where to focus. How do I start off? Or like a lot of them are like making probably really good money and they're really just sick and tired of what they're doing, but they can't really make that transition in the tech 
working help desk, like taking a pay cut. Um, so what do they do? The career changers have that advantage of experience, you know, wh whatever that experience may be. Um, hope, not hope, but maybe you've worked a career that is related to like accounting, you know, or finance, whatever, or uh, even retail. Like there's just so, I, it doesn't matter, I guess, what your experience is. I think there's so much value in just having life experience. And there's so many like different bits and pieces uh, that, of like technology and parts of technology that it, you've experienced throughout your career uh, that you can utilize towards a career in technology. Um, so anyway, like a career changer, um, they may want to focus more on a career that's obviously going to be paying them more money, um, you know, and like, so not, obviously not like an entry level type of role. So they, can, they have an advantage again with having that experience where they could go back to school, uh, maybe get a degree if that's something they can do, um, but they could definitely go out and get certifications. So if they wanted to be like, oh man, like I'm sick of doing accounting, I'm going to go uh, work in the cloud, right? Like, cool. Like you could go sign up for AWS right now for free, right? And start learning it just by watching a YouTube video. Like the, that's, that's how you get started, right? And then, then you can start figuring out like some certifications that you can get related to the cloud. Um, and then you start like doing projects and stuff that are related to cloud, right? You start documenting all of these things. You have a LinkedIn profile where you share all of this stuff. You know, you have like an online resume that shows off like all the stuff that you learned about the cloud. And, you know, again, you've documented, these are the things that I've learned. These are the things that I've done. You maybe have blogs that share that. You're part of different communities, um, you know, like like your, your Discord community. Um, there's thousands of other great Discord communities out there as well very similar, right? Where they're out there helping people, networking with people, connecting with people. LinkedIn is probably like the, the best resource out there, uh, as far as I'm concerned, for networking with other individuals and trying to excel your career. Um, so like all of these people, whether you're 18 years old or you're 40 year old career change or whatever, like you have so many more advantages to you nowadays to help you propel uh, yourself into IT than like ever before. So, um, you, I guess people need to be utilizing more resources like what you offer to really help guide them. Um, you know, five, six years ago, none of this existed, right? Like three years ago, literally three years ago, none of these Discord like, channels existed and LinkedIn sure as heck was not what it is today. Yep. Like these resources that you have available to you are game changers and they can literally change your life overnight like it, it's ridiculous and i see like a lot of people left because they're probably like this is like ridiculous information or like is this not true or i'm trying to tell somebody to be like a content creator or influencer or whatever this is like no i'm just giving you like the real facts of like what we're seeing in the digital world today like mm -hmm. you can't go into a job and ask for an application, you can't go into a business and be like, Hey, can I talk to the manager about a job here? They're gonna be like, you know, they'll look at you like you're freaking nuts. Or they'll say, Hey, go in that corner and, uh, you know, log into that like 98 year old computer and fill out a job app online, like normal people. Right. Yeah. Um, and then even still like nowadays, like when you submit your application, you submit your resume and you get like drilled down into like one of the, the top candidates, uh, to be interviewed the very first thing that those people are doing are looking you up on social media they're looking you up on the internet that is the very first thing that they're going to do before they even call you in for the interview so it's like something you like everybody has to keep in mind your social media presence is extremely valuable and important nowadays and i know that sucks and i know people hate that i hate it myself but you want to you want to like jump start your career in IT, I just gave you all of the secrets. Good luck. Is what it is. Yeah, just just do it, right? Just do it. <laughs> That's good. Just well, hey, it. we we are almost towards the end of the interview. Believe it or not, I would love to chat just real briefly about uh, TCM security. So you mentioned the conversation you had with Heath. <clears throat> kind of a few questions. One is just like, what is it like to work at <laughs> TCM Security? They have quickly become really a leader in cybersecurity and pen testing and education, disrupting it in a very good way. So just what's it like to be an employee of TCM security? Uh, it's the best job I've ever had in my entire life. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, you know, um, I, I knew he, you know, well, you know, before I started working here and he's, he was on my channel multiple times, 
uh, before I ever started working for him, right? So like him and I had kind of like a relationship before. Um, but I knew the type of person that Heath was because because I had this relationship. So when I talked about being genuine and and being, you know, like, you know, honest and, and just wanting, having a passion for helping people, Heath represents that uh, 100%. Like the values that Heath has, um, I mean, they completely like mimic mine, right? Like it, him and I could sit down literally all day long and probably have a conversation about how much we love and enjoy like helping people and being part of that. So like, you know, the whole reason why he started doing what he did and what he does now to this day is to help people. That's why things are, you know, as affordable as they are. And, you know, to be a part of that, like, it's a it's, it's it's very emotional for me um because i really can't believe it um so like you know people uh, always like it's got to be like the best thing in the world to, to work for tcm it really truly honestly is like i love my job every single day um but it's more so because like the impact that we have yeah you know we are we are truly changing people's lives and i get to see that you know i get to see the amount of of lives that we're changing and that's um you know, that's something that it, like, yeah, I'll always, always love and value and appreciate about what we do. Um, and I've told Heath many times, which like, he's made it very, very apparent, like on social media, like he wants to pay his employees, like their value, what they're worth, like he'll keep them, uh, you know, he'll give them raises, whatnot, keep them on board, because he knows like their value and all that. And like, he, he takes care of us very, very well. Um, but I've made it very clear to him, I'm not here for that. Like, you know, the amount of money that I started here with was like, you know, not very much, you know, it's, but like, I, I'd, I'd never want this job to be about money. Um, you know, for me, I guess, like, uh, the amount that I like, yeah, I, I guess I've made that kind of clear to him. Like, I'm just here to help, to help people, man. Like, that's it. So just, you know, let me help people. I, I will I give it. you 110% every single day of my life. That's so cool. Well, then a question on that, those watching this. Uh, I think TCM Security has been kind of a a place people want to work at because all people hear is positive things. They're not hiring all the time, but every once in a while they're hiring. And I know personally the hiring process is super competitive. I think I applied for like like two jobs at TCM. One was a content creator. I don't remember the other one uh, back in the day. And like I didn't even make it to an interview stage. So what I did when I didn't make it to an interview, I contacted Heath and then I interviewed him on Twitch. Like I, I flipped the tables on him. But I'm assuming it's a very competitive hiring process. Um, before I got to my, my role that I'm at now, which I also love, but for those who are watching this, who man would love to work at TCM security, the next time they see an open job position that might fit them, like what is some inside advice you can offer us on how to land a job at TCM security? What, what would you say? Be part of the community. Really? Like if, if, if you're watching this, you're probably already part of the community. Um, but that's, that's typically where we go to first for a lot of our jobs. Sure. Um, especially now, but so like, just say, take this back, like really quick. Um, I've been here like a year and a half now. So I first, like I found out about my job through Twitter because Heath posted on Twitter that he was looking for somebody for social media. And I sent him an email and was like, Hey, and he didn't put how much he was paying, which he puts that on all of his job postings now, by the way. But I was like, Hey, I literally sent him an email and he's like, Hey, how much are you paying for this, that position? And he literally replies back. He says, I don't know whatever the F somebody uh, convinces me that they're worth. And I thought that was hilarious, right? So but I, <laughs> like, fantastic. you know, I reply back and I was like, look, like, um, I'm very interested in the position. This is how much I need, but this is what I can do for you. And I literally listed out like all of these different things and some of those like, things like we've done or we're working on now, which is phenomenal for me to see. I'm so happy and proud of. Uh, but like, once I sent him that, like literally like two minutes later, he's like, do you have time for a phone call? We hopped on a phone call, like, you know, like 10 minutes after the initial email was sent. Um, we talked for a while, um, outlined some of the things that happened on a Wednesday by Saturday morning, I had a job offer in my email, you know, it's amazing. Um, so it's nuts. I was the third person, uh, to be hired for TCM security and we closed OG. out the year with, uh, 15 people. Wow. Um, so yeah, um, that's crazy. It is crazy for sure. Um, but a lot of the jobs that we post ha uh, go out on social media, like Discord, especially first. Always go to Discord first because we would love to hire from the community first if we can. 
uh, first and foremost. Like that's our 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 number one, um, I guess thing that we're that we're looking for is to bring in people from the community that have a that hopefully have an understanding of what we do. Um, because I, I would say if if I look across the board right now. Uh, all 15 people who are employed at DCM security, we all share, you know, a lot of these same similar values mm. and you, you just don't get that. You don't yeah. see that very often. Um, so, you know, knowing and understanding what we do, uh, like the mission that we have, um, you know, what, what drives us and that, that purpose, like the, that's something that, uh, yeah, we definitely, I think, look for and, and things like that powerful stuff well it is the end we are at the conclusion but before we sign off uh zach any imparting words of wisdom you would offer all of us put you on the uh, spot i didn't include that in my man. list of questions most of my questions i didn't include in my list of questions i kind of make them up as we go based on the conversation but imparting words of wisdom never give up no i don't know like i'm yeah, gonna give you up, up. Rickroll everybody at the end of the stream. That'd be great. Heck yeah. That'd be perfect. <laughs> no, I don't know, man. Um, I, it is, it's a wonderful journey and it can lead to a lot of, of great, you know, success and a lot of fun things for sure. Um, but you know, it's a journey and, and you have to enjoy it sometimes. So sometimes you're going to have your ups and downs, but, uh, mm. just try to enjoy yourself along the way. I don't enjoy know. the journey. Enjoyed the journey, Enjoy the journey. we'll say. That is good. Zach, thank you again. For those of you watching on Twitch or on YouTube after the fact, thank you for hanging out with us. It's an honor to have you take some time out of your day to to listen to us chat. And hopefully you found something helpful. I know I did, I did personally. So thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you guys next time. See ya.